Hey there, and here's part two of our cube tutorial in Motion 5. So after um, part one, we already had built our three-dimensional cube out of the 2D objects. You can see it here in our space. Now I want to position this a little bit more accurately. You can see half of it is below our um, ground plane and half is above. So uh, the way our project is, is arranged. You see here we've got the camera and we've got this group called cube. And within that group is our one, two, three, four, five, six um, faces of the cube. Um, so if we select the group, we can change the position of the whole object. You think of this now as one 3D object. For those of you who are coming from like a 3D studio or Cinema 4D background, this is now your 3D object, um, this group. So don't worry so much now about the individual things inside. And I want to change its position so that it is um, above the plane. So we need to get the correct uh, axis, which would be this one. Remember, our cube is 110 in the half length. So if we enter 110 on the y axis, our cube will now sit on the ground plane. Now, the other thing is there's an anchor point. Now, the anchor point is basically this here, and that is around, that's the point around which the cube will rotate and move. So if I was to rotate this cube around right now, um, let's go in the other direction, hold on. You'll see it rotates down and it disappears again underneath our ground plane and then comes back up. Because we're rotating around the anchor point, which is on this face. And we don't want the anchor point on that face. I want the anchor point to be in the center of the cube. So, so when we spin the cube around, it'll spin from the center point rather than from an edge for the effect that I want to achieve. So we'll go to our anchor point here, and you see if we move that, the cube moves around the anchor point. So we want to basically make our Z anchor point 110. That will now put the uh, anchor point of the cube in the middle, and now when we spin it around, it will always spin around that central point. You see, it's no longer spinning around the edge, it's spinning around our center, which is or the behavior that I want for the animation effect that we're going to try and achieve. So now we've set up our 3G object. Um, we've got the anchor point set correctly, it's above our ground plane. Now we're going to do some animation of this um, object. Let's um, set our camera to the, to the position where we want it to be for this. And... Let's have it positioned something like that. Okay, so now we're going to keyframe this um, cube to animate it. And that's actually pretty straightforward. You see we've got this record button here. Um, so in our timeline down here, we've got a, a 300 frame um, timeline. We'll go to frame number one. And we're going to move the position of this cube off of the screen. So we're going to move it out of the way. So it's over here, so we can't see it. So our position now, um, see here is minus 658, so we're off the screen. We'll hit our record button, and we'll drag our slider along, let's say, 15 frames. And then we'll return its position back to zero. So now, we've animated it onto the screen. You see it slides onto the screen like that. Now I want to add something else to this effect. I don't want it to slide on, I want it to spin onto the screen. So we're going to use the rotation um, parameter. So let's just rotate the cube. Again, we've got our record button selected. Um, so we'll go to our rotation and we'll add keyframes for the X, Y, and Z axis for frame number one. We spin forward to frame number 15 and we want the cube to spin onto the screen so it's going to rotate like this as it comes onto the screen. So we probably want it to rotate around let's say 360 degrees so we can type that in. So it's going to do a 360, 
as it comes onto the screen. And now if we play this, you'll see we've got the spin as it emerges. Now what we have to do is position our camera back so that cube is just off the screen. And we hit play. And now we have our cube spinning onto the screen. That's quite a neat effect. Um, we're going to continue to build on this in the uh, future tutorials. You can see that the camera position can also be animated as well. So we've got the camera also moving at the same time as the cube. So all these different elements can all be animated. Um, if you want to keep the camera static, we can just uh, remove those keyframes. from the camera so our camera will remain in a static position uh, yeah we need to also remove these keyframes from the camera location as well There we go. And there's our cube spinning onto the screen. So I hope you found this second part of the tutorial useful on how to animate our 3D object. Um, if you're not sure how to create this object, you can see our previous tutorial, which uh, can be found on my YouTube channel, which explains how we actually created this 3D object and added the cameras to the screen. Um, one final thing then we're going to want to add is some um, lighting to this so uh, you see down here we've got lights we can select and drag these around on the screen and this will give us some some shadow and some um, depth to the um, now we'll turn into a spotlight rotate it just so we can get it in the kind of position that we want and we'll add another spotlight. Um, sorry, we'll add a, um, a point light that'll come down here. So now we've got a little bit of lighting and shadow added to our cube as it animates onto the screen. I think it's spinning maybe a little bit fast as it comes on. We could slow down that spinning by just um, lowering the number of revolutions that it makes. So uh, we'll select our cube and we go to the um, rotation properties. We'll skip forward to our next location there and let's make this 180 instead. So now when it comes onto the screen it should spin a little bit slower. There we go, that's a little bit better. A little bit more smooth. We'll just position our camera again. And there we go. There's our cube coming onto the screen. So uh, in the next part of the tutorial, we're going to continue building on this and um, create a, a nice title effect which will come up on the screen. And then we'll go on to later how we can use this then finally in Final Cut Pro itself. So thanks for tuning in and I'll see you in the next part of this tutorial.